my mom like laughs at me so much because I'm like, I would go through labor like three more times before I ever want to be pregnant again. <laughs> like, oh, how funny. And she's like, nobody ever enjoys labor. <laughs> and I'm like, I loved it. I loved my Aww. labor. All right. This week's reviewer of the week is Nina 66. And she says from panicked to prepared in two weeks. Oh, I'm excited for this one, you guys. She said, I listened to this podcast through my first pregnancy and went back to listen to every podcast ever made. I also bought the birth class, My Essential Birth. Labor and birth went even better than planned. I owe it all to Stephanie. It's great to be back listening as I grow baby number two. Okay, that's really cool. Um, If you have been listening here for a while and you're looking for that like beef up, I I mean, I can't believe I love the idea of like going back and listening to every single podcast. But even if you dive in and now and you just binge listen to what you can, I hope that it'll give you a strength and encouragement and joy um, and all that preparation that you feel like you need just that like boost before you go into labor. So that's really exciting. For those of you that are listening today, I'm excited to be here with Savannah for another birth story. So Savannah, will you take a moment and say hello to everybody? Introduce yourself. Tell us a little about your family. Hi. Yes. So I'm Savannah. (laughs) Um, My fiance, CJ, and I welcomed our first baby, um, our baby girl in January of 2023. She actually came on New Year's Day, which was (laughs) unplanned, but exciting. (laughs) Um, Yeah, we uh, were from Cleveland and my fiance owns a flooring company. And I am in grad school right now, which is like a whole challenge in itself. But we've been together about three oh my years goodness. <laughs> and we've known each other longer than that. But <laughs> um, yeah, so I'm just excited to be here. Well, I'm excited for you to be here, too. Um, and I love to start by talking about pregnancy. So if you will take a couple moments, tell me a little bit about what your pregnancy was like. How early did you know? Were there any kind of like interesting things or fun things that happened um, all the way through to any like concerns that you had with your providers or having to switch providers or changing of due dates, anything like that? Yeah, so our pregnancy was not planned. um, So I did not know right away. I was feeling awful and a lot of um, like autoimmune diseases and stuff run in my family. And I was really thinking that I had something more serious wrong with me. So I went to the doctor and they actually didn't even test me for pregnancy. They test me for all these other things. Everything was coming back normal. And then one day I was just like, you know what? Like, I'm just going to take a test. I, I don't think I'm pregnant. And then it was positive. And it was actually on CJ's 30th birthday that I found out. <laughs> so happy I birthday. was like, happy birthday. I'm pregnant. <laughs> um, so I was just mind blown. Um, I had some other health things going on right before that, where I wasn't even sure if I was going to be able to get pregnant. So it was um, relieving in a way, but at the same time, you know, I had kind of wanted to wait until I was finished with school and like, you know, other things, but you know, God has a plan. (laughs) And um, so right off the rip, CJ was like, boom, dad mode, like I'm here for it, which I really needed because I was so, so sick. I was miserable. And I also was just so like in my head all like the whole time, a lot of anxiety, just wondering like, you know, typical things that moms think about, am I going to do everything right? You know, is the baby okay? Like inside of me? I don't know if I'm, am I eating the right things? Um, I, like I said, I was very sick in the beginning. I ended up losing like almost 10 pounds just from how sick I was. So that was really concerning, but, um, I found a midwife right away after listening to the podcast, actually. Um, I think like the day after I found out, I'm like, I need information, like podcasts, (laughs) like anything. And luckily I found you and I like just absorbed all this information. And I was like, okay, it seems like a midwife, you know, is really the way to go for me. So, um, I found an amazing midwife and she told me like right at the beginning, um, the first trimester just survive. (laughs) Like, you know, you can worry about the nutrition and health and everything else once you're feeling a little better. But right now, all you have to do is just get through it. Like if all you can eat in a day is a cracker, that's fine. Like, it's just about that. And that really helped me a lot, I think, because I was just so nervous about everything. Um, 
but yeah, it, it ended up being a really positive experience. But just right in that beginning, there was so much um, anxiety and illness. And uh, but luckily, um, there was no actual like complications with my pregnancy. It was a very she was a healthy baby. Everything went well once I got out of that first trimester. Um, no changing of the due dates or anything. My due date was um, January sixteenth which actually was the start of my semester. <laughs> oh my goodness. Um, Cause I had told myself, you know, like I, I don't want to lose who I am or like what I'm doing. Like, you know, I've always wanted to be a mom, but like I said, I was planning a little further down the road. So I was like, I'm not going to take a semester off. I'm not going to take time off. Like I'm going to power through, I'm going to do it. And, you know, lucky for us, she ended up coming a little early. So I had time to adjust, but <laughs> <laughs> that's crazy. Are your classes in person or are you doing this at home? So they were in person um, up until like December of right before I had her. And then I had talked to my advisor and everything about switching everything online once she was here. So that's awesome. That's so cool yes. that they worked with you on that. I love that. Um, okay. Oh so gosh, how many? Amazing. Yeah. I mean, and that's kind of incredible and amazing that we can do that today. Like I keep saying, if there's one thing that like 2020 did for us, it's, you know, stuff like this for mothers has been such a benefit. Yes. Um, tell me about, you said that you took that pregnancy test. You didn't really know what was going on. How many weeks were you when you took that test? Um, I was like six weeks. So oh, awesome. still kind of early, but um, yeah. And I just, I remember like the thought of, well, what do I do now? Like, it's such a big thing but then the like you know the doctors or the midwives like they're like oh we don't see you until like eight what is it, eight or nine weeks or something right and yeah. so I was like well what like what do we do I don't know anything yeah. about <laughs> anything like I'm like I think I took two tests because I wasn't you know I wanted to be sure and then I'm like well can we at least come in for like a blood test or something like I need something more solid because I think I was just in in kind of denial for a minute like yeah this is real like I didn't know if I could even have kids like I don't know so luckily they did let us go in at that six week point and like they took did a did some of the blood tests and they were able to at least for me <laughs> my mental right. health to see yeah. it on paper yeah so did you have you like personal question feel free to mm -hmm. not answer it have you like mm -hmm. skipped periods before or like I just wonder or like did you have like longer durations of of menstrual cycles before where like that wasn't like you said it wasn't even on your mind so it just made me curious about what your cycles looked like for other moms that are listening and then I'm curious too about you said you just felt awful what does that mean what did that look like for you yeah so my cycles I was on the birth control pill for like almost 10 years. So it got to a point where I wasn't even really getting periods anymore. And um, I was having all these pains that they were thinking were like cysts and stuff and going, you know, back and forth, um, like ultrasounds and going to the doctor. And then like two, I had an OB that had quit and then another OB that had quit. So it was like, I was going and finding all these things and never getting real answers. And the last like ultrasound I had had, they were basically like, well, we just don't really see much in there. Like, and then my OB quit. And like, that was all that I had. And like, they, I think the last recommendation they'd give me was like, just to go off your birth control and see if anything, um, like kind of comes back. I, I don't really know the like lingo they were using with me, but that was what I had interpreted from our conversations. So, you know, I was like, okay, I guess that's just what it is, you know? And then like, I, I'm kind of usually a worst case scenario thinker. So that's when <laughs> I was like, I don't know if anything's ever going to come back. I don't know if I'm ever going to be able to have kids, you know? And then feeling awful, I just, I, I felt almost like a shell of a person. Like I was Aww. so exhausted all the time, like waking up exhausted. I was sleeping in so much, which I, I work a lot. My fiance and I both kind of like workaholics right before we had the baby. So it was abnormal for me to like sleep in so late and then like come home and take, you know, two hour naps. And, um, I love food. I'm a big foodie. And for me to like, even just look at something and be like, Oh, like, <laughs> I feel like I'm going to throw up now, like not, not wanting to eat ever at night, but then also feeling sick about it. Like it was just, and then uh, headaches and, you know, kind of those typical, you know, <laughs> first trimester symptoms. But for me, it was just so 
off-putting because I was like, I didn't know why I was feeling that way. (laughs) Yeah, it would be. As you're explaining that, I'm like, oh, yeah, like if you think you're pregnant, then obviously all these things add up. But if you don't, like, yeah, you would be looking all over the place, like what is going on with my body? So did you start having those symptoms, would you say, around four weeks? Was it like two weeks of like, this feels really crazy? Yes. Yeah. yeah, Right. And then after I found out, I'm like, oh my gosh, like this makes so much sense. Mm. And I feel like the day I took the test, it was like, you know, kind of the, oh my gosh, like anxious excitement, whatever. And then like the next day it just like, boom, it was even worse. Like I was like, you know, getting sick. I can relate to that a hundred percent. So I, I always did like the first response, right? I wanted my answer like right away. I never tested positive even with the first response until the day after my missed period. But I kid you not, even if I was like, I know I'm pregnant, the second that test said pregnant, it was like, there comes the nausea and all of the symptoms and all. So what you were describing is so real. So if there's other moms listening, like I think it's such a real thing. I don't know if it's like that mental, like you just like, like you said, put it all together and you're just like taking it all in and your body feels that or what, but it's real. <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> so funny. Okay, so you mentioned your provider. You said midwife. Um, is mm-hmm. this a provider that you saw like a hospital midwife or did you go out of hospital? And how did you find them? What did you do to locate one? So it wasn't in hospital midwife. Um, my mom is actually a nurse practitioner. So oh, obviously cool. like she was like the first person I called when I found out. And so she um, knows a lot of nurse practitioners and the one specifically had worked with this midwife and used her as well and um, just had great things to say about her. And as I had mentioned, like the previous OB I had had quit. So I didn't really have anyone. So I was really starting fresh, you know, fresh in the pregnancy with a new provider. Um, And even from that very first appointment, you know, walking in even, you know, too early to really go to the doctor, but they still let us. And CJ and I went in and she just like really took the time and like sat with us and um you know you know i know this wasn't planned but like how are you guys feeling about it like how are you doing like really just cared and wasn't just like come in okay like what are you doing here and get out you know like i feel like i've had that experience with doctors in the past of like rushing through everything so the fact that even just that first day she really took the time to sit with us and explain things explain you know how the whole process works of like when we're going to go to appointments and when we're going to do you know, pretty much everything. Cause as a new, not expecting person, I had no idea. And so it really, um, it really made me feel good and, um, confident in my deci- decision to have her as our provider. That's awesome. Did she happen to work in a group practice or this was the person that you got to see every appointment and she was going to be at your birth? So it was more like a group. Um, So she's like, oh, there's, I think there was eight of them. There's eight of us here. And then there's also a nurse practitioner that we work with. And, um, you know, it's kind of what are the odds that who's going to be there, who's going to be on call. So we took the time to actually um, make appointments with different people, which she kind of suggested, you know, right in the beginning, she's like, you can see whoever's available. um, So you can kind of get to like meet all of them. And then like, as you get further in the pregnancy, if you want to just stick with me, that's great. Um, And then, so we did, we saw almost everyone there. And we like knew everyone. And then my daughter came on a holiday and it was like an out of network person that they had called in with birth. (laughs) Yeah. Oh, I'm excited to hear about that part. Yes. (laughs) That's neat. Oh, how funny. So how was it? I kind of, part of me, I have mixed feelings about group practice because I'm like, you want to know who's going to be there and all this stuff. But like the reality of it is, even if you have somebody the whole time, you can end up with someone else depending on situations and whatnot. So the benefit of a group practice is you get to meet with so many different midwives and ask your questions to different people and get a feel for different personalities and stuff, which I think is what I'm always kind of like touting, like make sure you interview different providers, which is what a group Mm -hmm. practice naturally provides if you schedule to meet with different ones. So tell me how you felt about that experience. Did you feel like that was a positive experience for you to be able to meet with all those other people? And did it make you feel more comfortable when it came to birth time? Yes, I do think it was a positive experience. I think at first, like, like you were kind of saying, like the general thought of meeting with a bunch of people and not really knowing who's for sure going to be there at your labor is like off putting a little bit. So I was nervous. 
But that's when I was like, okay, like, let's, you know, make these different appointments. Let's meet everyone. So at least we will know who's walking in the door, you know, during my labor, or whatever. And um, I ended up really liking the experience. I liked seeing, I mean, I loved, you know, my midwife, but it was interesting to see different perspectives and like each of them kind of have different tips or tricks or, um, or even just like the ones you don't mesh with as well. You're kind of like, okay, like, that's why I have my provider. Like that's, you know, why I want to see her mostly. And it was just, it was nice comfort kind of knowing, cause I like to have all my ducks in a row. I like to have a plan. I like to know everything. So I was like, okay, even if it's one, I don't mesh with as well. Like at least when she's walking in the door, I know kind of who it is, what I'm expecting. They've met me before. It's not just a stranger, even though it ended up being a stranger, but (laughs) yeah, that's so funny. Um, okay. Well, how about like your visits and things? Um, I assume you like brought questions and things with you. Maybe did you have any specific testing? Did you choose to do like the GBS testing, gestational diabetes? It sounds like you didn't have any of those things, but let me know if you did. Um, and then same with like ultrasound, did you end up doing like an ultrasound at some point and were those increased as time went on? How long were you like pregnant too? So like how, like, I guess what I'm asking is like when we talk induction and things like that, um, was that ever offered at like a later appointment where you were at like 38, 39? Was that discussed? Sure. So we did do all the testing, pretty much everything that they, you know, recommend we did, um, like the gestational diabetes testing, um, the GBS, we did all the ultrasounds. Um, we did the early like genetic testing. I forget exactly what it's called, um, where we found out the gender and stuff as well. Um, so we did all that, everything came back great. All the ultrasounds, um, were great. We ended up having like one extra one just in the beginning because I went into the doctor so early. And I remember at that very first one, I mean, obviously there's nothing to see really there, but they had me hold my breath to be able to hear the heartbeat. Like it was like, so they're like, you know, may not be there yet. You know, like we may, so don't worry, but like we can try it this way. And it was there, um, which was really sweet. And I just, I, I couldn't be happier with the hospital that we worked with just because they were so personable, even with everyone, the ultrasounds, all the testing, um, all the midwives, like it was really a great experience, um, through that. And I ended up delivering at 37 and six, 37 weeks and six days. Um, and later appointments, I think at my 35 week appointment, I had brought up induction just because of my first day of school. (laughs) And I was like, I had always had a feeling she was going to come early. And I feel like every new mom wants to feel that way. So, (laughs) and after listening to the podcast and like everything, I'm like, okay, I'm just going to, I'm going to plan for 42 weeks, (laughs) but I'm going to be ready in case she does come early. And I think it was reality was hitting me of, you know, how hard being, uh, you know, having a newborn and starting school will be at the same time. So I had kind of just brought it up, like getting information on it, you know, everything. And so she said, okay, you know, at your 37 week appointment, like if you're still feeling this way, we can call and schedule the induction just for a week early. So you have that week buffer before your classes start. So I was comfortable with that to go home and think about it talk about it and see, you know, kind of what I felt comfortable with. Um, which she really did not push me either way. Like she was very, here's the information, here's the facts, here's some things you can do to try to start labor on your own. Like she was giving me suggestions, you know, if you want to go early, like here's some things that are safe for you to try once you hit 37 weeks. And, you know, she really was just great with very unbiased information, which I was appreciative of. And again, also listening to the podcast, like you guys have so many tips and tricks and things to try. Um, For my plan, I really did not want to be induced. I didn't want to have any Pitocin. I didn't want to, you know, sit in the hospital for days. Like I wanted, you know, the very like, oh, I feel contractions. I wanted to labor at home for as long as possible. The hospital is right down the street from us. So I was like, okay, I can really, you know, stay home. I wanted to try to go natural, you know, all these things that you have in your big picture plan that sometimes just don't go to plan. So 
um, that was the only time induction was discussed. And then I ended up going into labor before we could schedule it. <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> yes. <laughs> All of that is good. Um, okay. How about your birth partner, CJ? How was he? Yes. So you said he immediately went into dad mode. Um, Absolutely. So what did that look like for you guys? Did you have a lot of conversations surrounding birth? Did you have him listen to the podcast? You guys took the birth course. So you've got some of that going on. Mm-hmm. Um, but how did he support you throughout? So, like I said, right from the beginning, he was so supportive. I think we took like a day each to kind of wrap our heads around like, okay, this is it. This is life. You know, we weren't married yet. So we were, you know, kind of like, all right, well now, I mean, we knew we wanted to be together, but it was like, well, now we're in it. Like we're, we're here, we're doing it. I had just moved into his house like two weeks prior. <laughs> like it was like, <laughs> everything was happening very quickly, but he's kind of the same as me where it's like, if we are doing something, we're putting our all into it, like full, like we want the full education. We want to know everything about it. So he kind of jumped in. Um, I had sent him one podcast episode and it was like one of the ones that was like for the birth partners. Like, I think you had your husband on it or something like that. And I had sent it to him like, Hey, here's some, you know, tips or whatever. And it was still pretty like in the first trimester, I think. And then he had, to go on a road trip with some of his guy friends. And one of their wives texted me and said, Oh my gosh, CJ is making them listen to this whole podcast, like the whole seven hour drive. He was listening to a bunch of your episodes with them in the car. That's awesome. I'm sad he's not here today to talk about this. That's hilarious. I I know he like, he has so much to say. He was really sad, but, um, Yeah. So he really jumped in and I think he even probably did some extra research that I didn't even know about, but he was really supportive just from the beginning of like, he was always like making me food or like when we would go out with like friends or something, he would tell them like, Oh, like that smell makes Sav sick today. Like, please don't like, (laughs) or like we we work together too at a restaurant. So he would always bring me, you know, like Jolly Ranchers or like something to like kind Mm. of curb my nausea of like the smells and everything. Just like, like he was really good at picking up on the little things. And then as the pregnancy progressed, you know, we did the birth co- course together. Um, we picked one night every week to like sit and either do one of the lessons or practice something we had done before or um, like sit and just talk about my expectations or his expectations with everything, which I mean, he really didn't have much. It was all coming from me mostly, but um just being a, an attentive and listening, active partner was really, I mean, he was all I could ask for and more. Really, mm-hmm. I was lucky. <laughs> but yeah, that's awesome. That's really cool that he he dove into it that way. Um, yes. What would you say, like, between the two of you, what do you think was the most helpful or, like, productive thing that you guys ended up doing together in preparation for the birth? Um, I think just keeping that, like, open line of communication, like, you know, pregnancy and birth is awkward and it's, Mm. you know, sometimes a little too, too much than what you're ready to like share with your partner at a time for the first one, I think. So I think we kind of just acknowledge that at the beginning of like, you know, this is what we're in for now. You know, these are things we're going to have to just talk about and do. And so like the days that I woke up and I was like, man, I really am just not feeling well today. And I am angry or I'm sad and this is how I'm feeling. And he would just okay, like, give me the space to feel what I felt or like, okay, well, what do you need? What do you want today? Um, Just like those little things of being able to communicate kind of my feelings, his feelings, I probably could have done a better job about checking in on him too. But he really, you know, he took everything I needed and made it what I wanted. So it was great. That's awesome. Um, Tell me a little bit about the details of the how you prepared. So how how many weeks pregnant were you when you guys started the birth course? I think it was later than I wanted to do it, but still probably a little early. Like I think maybe like 27 weeks or something. Cause I remember being like, we, we have to do this. We have to do this. This is the one that I want. <laughs> like, cause I think I had gotten something from our hospital that we kind of like looked mm. through together, but I was like, no, like I want a more try this route. Like I want to go into it. And then, like I said, he was a fan of the podcast too. So he was totally fine with it. 
Um, so at that point we had started like doing the weekly, you know, we're going to sit down and do like a lesson or two, or we're going to sit down and practice some of the skills. Um, I had started doing like the exercises and stuff pretty much right away. Um, like, well, as soon as I started feeling better. So I should say at the beginning of the second trimester, I started doing those. Um, so he, and he would just kind of like sit with me while I did them at night before bed or, you know, be around for it. Um, I remember packing the bag at like 30 weeks. Cause I was like, you know, I don't know what's going to happen. Like you can go early, you can go late. I just want to be prepared. And he's the same way. So I remember telling, like showing him exactly where everything was. Cause we kept everything in the nursery. So I'm like, okay, like whenever the time comes, cause we're both so busy. I'm like, you're the one who has to come home and get the stuff. And, you know, I had like a little basket for our nurses done too. Oh, so nice. Was, like, this yes. is what you have to grab. This is your job. Like very clear cut expectations that we prepared. Um, so we were prepared pretty early. <laughs> That's awesome. I love that. Yeah. Um, okay. Thinking back, like what were some of your favorite things that you guys did together for preparation, either from the birth course or listening to podcasts or labor rehearsal, meditation? What were your favorite things that you practiced? So one of the things I think that brought me like the most joy was one of the lessons was like about how to, um, do like massage for like while you're in labor and stuff. Mm. And he was just awful at it. (laughs) He was just (laughs) awful. And I couldn't tell if he was doing it on purpose of like, I don't really want to do this. But then I was like, what are you doing? And I think I kind of hurt his feelings and I felt bad. But it was just something we were able to kind of laugh about together. And I was like, okay, well, I definitely do not want you to do that to me while I'm in labor. Like, (laughs) it was like a face massage, like in the neck and stuff. And I was like, we do not have to practice this anymore. Like, I, I don't want you to do this for me. So like, I think even keeping in mind that like some of the stuff that doesn't go like 100% the way you want it to was still just like a, it was still like an intimate and fun moment for us to like do that. Yeah. Um, But other than that, I think um, just gaining the information together, like whenever we would drive to go out to dinner or, you know, we had somewhere to be, we would put one of the podcast episodes on and, you know, talk about how we felt about it or if we agreed with certain things or disagreed with certain things or like, um, you know, really just made it so our expectations were clear and so we could be on the same Mm. page or at least see where the other person was at um i think that was probably the most helpful that's how we both like to gain information is like kind of listening so um i think just being really informed about everything even the stuff that we thought we weren't going to need to be informed about um but still gaining that knowledge was something that was special for us to be able to do together Yeah, that's great. Were there things when you were coming up to getting closer to that birth time, you mentioned that your midwife had mentioned some things that you could do after 37 weeks. Did you even have time for that since you went so quickly? Or were there anything, were there things that you did to like prep your body for the process of labor? Yeah, so I had the red raspberry leaf tea, which I had really bad Braxton Hicks, like since like the middle of my second trimester. Um, So she had recommended me waiting to start the tea just because she said it can like um, Mm. kind of give you those. So I I started that at 37 weeks and I think I literally did it for like three days or something before. And then I was doing um, like the curb walking a lot. Um, We have a lot of stairs. So I was doing it like that way. Um, I was, I leaked colostrum a lot during my pregnancy. So for a while I just had like the little catchers in there. And then, um, the, like, it was like two days before I actually went into labor. I started kind of hand expressing a little bit just cause I was like, I'm so sick of waking up with a wet shirt. Like (laughs) I'm just going to try to do this before bed and hopefully it'll help little. I mean, I didn't know what was to come, but, (laughs) um, So I think, you know, those types of things, because she said, you know, at 37 weeks, you can try to like safely express, you know, a little bit. So I waited and I'm like, part of me really thinks that's kind of what kicked me into labor a little Hmm. bit. Yeah. Um, But that's just my theory. (laughs) No, I mean, when your body's ready to go, that's when those things work. So it would totally make sense (laughs) that that had a place um, involved with that. Okay, so let's go through all the labor stuff. So you express colostrum. Let's go from there. Mm -hmm. Oh, actually, yes. hold on. Did you have um? Did you have an appointment at thirty-seven weeks then with your provider? 
I think so. The timeline was like kind of messed up. So I think I went in at 36 weeks because she had the week off of like my 37 weeks. So it was like I was going to go in at 36 weeks and then at 38, I was going to start the weekly appointments. Like we were skipping that 37 yeah. week appointment. And I remember oh, I had just, I just commented this to someone on the Facebook page, I think, but I went in at the 36 week appointment because baby, I had felt baby drop like the night before. I remember shooting oh, up in the middle of the night and being like, wait, I really just felt something like she dropped. So I went into the appointment, like so excited. Like, I'm like, I'm going to have her do like a cervical check. Like, I feel like, you know, things are really, you know, progressing and um, I still was like a little nervous because I was like, well, it's a little early, but you know, I knew she was like, okay, in the weight and everything. And she checked my cervix and there was like nothing, like no dilation, <laughs> no effacement. Like she was just like, yeah, you know, baby's drop kind of <laughs> like, so she, but she was really nice about like, but things can happen at any time, you know, but you know, still whenever you, people tell you that and you still hear like you're a zero, yes. you know, dilated and then you're like, kind of sad. Yeah. So I was like, <laughs> of course, like I was so excited and you know, whatever. So that was that 36 appointment. Then she was like, okay, I'll see you at your 30 week appointment. And then that was when she said, um, like, we'll call on that day together and schedule your induction for the next week at 39 mm. weeks. Awesome. Okay. So take yeah. us through the birth. Yes. This is my favorite part. My mom like laughs at me so much because I'm like, I would go through labor like three more times before I ever want to be pregnant again. <laughs> like, oh, how funny. And she's like, nobody ever enjoys labor. <laughs> and I'm like, I loved it. I loved my Aww. labor. Um, so in the middle of the night on right. No. So it was like probably two in the morning on a Saturday morning. I woke up in the middle of the night and I had like almost felt like like, did my water just break? Like, it just felt gross. So I'm like, whatever, I'm going to get up and go pee and whatever. And the muc my mucus plug had come out. And which is gross. <laughs> and I was like, well, okay, like, and I had known that that, you know, it doesn't mean nothing, but it doesn't really mean anything. Like it can, you know, it can mean you're going to labor in two weeks, it can mean, you know, tomorrow, I don't know. So I remember I like, was a little excited and I came back to bed. I woke CJ up a little bit. I'm like, hey, like my mucus plug just came out. And then he was like, um, are, are you okay? And I'm like, yeah, I'm going to go back to bed, but I just wanted to tell you. And he was like, okay, cool. <laughs> you know, so I went back to bed and then he let, he leaves for work really early. So I'm always still in bed. And I think that day I didn't get up to like 10 in the morning and I got up and I'm like making the bed. And there was kind of like, a dribble on my slippers. And I'm like, Oh, that's weird. Like, I wonder if just the rest of my mucus plug came out because I know it can come out in pieces or whatever. So I was like, Oh, that's interesting. And just went about my day, kind of that would happen a little randomly throughout the day, but it wasn't anything significant to me. Like I just kept thinking, Oh, it's more mucus plug, you know, whatever. And I remember CJ had called me to like, just check on me. And I had told him that like, Oh, I'm kind of like dripping a little bit. And he was like, well, do I need to come home from work? And I was like, no, I don't really like, I don't feel anything. I'm not like cramping, like everything's fine. So he stayed and I went about my day. It was new year's Eve at this point. And oh my goodness. we had called some of our friends like, Hey, you guys want to like, we're not going out for new year's Eve, but if you guys want to come over tonight, you know, whatever. And they had made jokes like, yeah, okay guys. Like, we're going to come over and you're going to go to the hospital or something. So, and then I had to go into work, which I was just waitressing at um, this like family owned restaurant. That's actually where CJ and I met. So we both were working there on new year's Eve. So I was getting ready for work. And now looking back, I was literally sitting on a towel as I was getting ready for work. And I was like, you know, maybe I'll just call my midwife and just let her know what's going on. Like just to see what she says. And I called and it was just whoever the midwife was on call at that point. And I kind of told her and she kind of said the same thing, like, yeah, you know, mucus plugs can even regenerate, like it doesn't really mean much, it kind of sounds whatever. But if you're still concerned about it, you can come in and we can check you for amniotic fluid. So I was like, well, how, like, how dire is it? Like, if, if it is my water, is it an emergency? Like, do I need to come in? Or can I go work my shift and then see if it's still happening? And she said that like, you can go work your shift. And if it's still happening, just come on in. So I was like, okay, great. I went to work 
nothing was really going on. It was slow because it was New Year's Eve. And all of my coworkers are like, dude, like, you're so pregnant. What are you even still doing here? <laughs> you know, <laughs> why? And I, CJ, of course, was telling, he likes to talk a lot. So he had told everyone my whole business, like, oh, say I've lost your mucus plug last night. And like, <laughs> so everyone knew what was going on with me, which is fine. Um, and one of the, one of my friends that works there had the same thing. Like she went a little early, she was kind of leaking, went into the hospital and it was her water that broke. So she was like, I really think you should just go to the hospital. And at this point I was like, you guys are kind of all just bothering me. Like, fine, I'll go. I'll finish my shift and I'll go. And towards the end of the shift, I remember my daughter stopped moving and that really scared me because mm -hmm. she was very active. So I was like, you know what? I'm going to ask to leave a little early and the hospital, like I said, is right down the road from our house. So I'm like, it's on the way home. I will just stop and make sure she's okay. Cause at this yeah. point, like I was like, there's no way my water broke. Like I'm early. I'm a first time mom. Like this just isn't what's happening, but I want to make sure that the baby's okay. So CJ's parents were out of town. So he was going to check on their house and he's like, well, do you want me to come with you instead? And I was like, no, I really think that they're just going to say she's fine and they're going to send me home. And then I called my mom just to tell her like, yeah, I'm just stopping to check on the baby. And she lives a half hour away. So she's like, do you think I should start driving out? And I'm like, no, I really think it's fine. Like, you know, whatever. So I went and as I was waiting, I got more nervous. So then I texted CJ. I'm like, maybe like whenever you're done with your parents, you could just stop at the hospital and wait with me. And so he was like, okay. And they called me back. I told them what was going on. Nobody seemed... It was one of the midwives I had seen before that was there at this time. So she wasn't really concerned. So I was like, okay, there's no need for concern. So she's like, I'll just check your cervix real quick. We'll set you up to the monitors. We'll make sure baby's good. And then you'll be good to go. I'm like, all right, great. As soon as she like went to go do a check, she said, oh, oh yeah. And like that is like forever ingrained in my brain. <laughs> and she was like, oh yeah, there's like a puddle of fluid down here. Like you're, you're in labor. And I was like, what? Like, and she was still in my cervix and I called CJ and was like, <laughs> hey, it's the real deal. Time for you to come. And he was like, oh, okay. Like I, I just got home. I'm going to shower and I'll grab the stuff and I'll be on my way. I'm like, all right, cool. And then I called my mom. And so then at this point, like as soon as she did the exam, like bloody show came, like everything, you know, progressed as it should have. So then she was like, well, are you feeling contractions? And I was like, no. And they set me up to the monitors after a little bit and baby was fine. Everything was fine. And she's like, are you not feeling those? Like you are having contractions. And I was like, are you kidding me? I've been feeling like this for a week. Like I really just thought it was, you know, the pain of being like a pregnant woman. <laughs> and I had been feeling these like minor cramps, but they almost just still felt like the Braxton Hicks to me a little bit. And so I was like, wow, I really think I can do this natural then. Like if I haven't been feeling this this whole time and, you know, it just, it all seemed great at the time. Like I was excited. I was sad that I wasn't able to like labor at home like I wanted to. But at this point, my water had been broke for like 10 hours already. So, you know, they said probably that I went to work was good because it was like the movement of like keeping things going and everything. So they were tracking my contractions and they weren't really progressing as quick as they wanted them to. So she told me, um, you know, I'll give you till the 12 hour mark, like 10 o'clock. And then I would like to start you on a low dose of Pitocin if that's okay. And I'm like, I really thought about it, but I, I was just nervous for the baby at that point. Cause you know, they tell you when your water breaks, you're on like a time clock at that point. So I was like, okay, you know, and I was really stressed because I didn't eat dinner. Like I was like, I came right from work. Like I didn't even shower. I thought you were going to send me home. I didn't eat. Like, can I please eat? Like, I feel like that will really help me. And so my nurse said like, usually the midwives are a little more lenient with this. And I remember they brought me like a chicken salad sandwich that I don't even know. I don't even like chicken salad. And it was like still one of the best things I ever ate. <laughs> it, was like, it was so good. And then my contractions picked up right after I ate. Mm. And it was looking really good. And then they still ended up having to put me on a low dose of Pitocin, which 
was fine. I was like, I can still do this. Like, you know, I was feeling good. I was laughing, singing, like bouncing on the ball. I had asked for like the mobile monitor so I could kind of walk around um, and keep moving. Like my mom was so impressed. She's like, how are you like making jokes right now? Like you're like the easiest laboring woman I've ever met. <laughs> like, so, you know, we went around waiting, waiting, waiting. So then it got to a point where they came in and they're like, okay, we have to turn the Pitocin up. And I'm like, okay, fine. Like I'm feeling great. This is awesome. And I feel like the second she hit the button, like there was this loud popping sound, like almost like the baby had kicked one of the monitors. The rest of my water broke. Like I was like, oh my gosh. And I started just like screaming. Like I was like, ah, like that messed me up. That messed me up. Like I need to go to the bathroom. Like what's going on? Like it just hit zero to a hundred so quickly. And so I went to the bathroom and it was like, oh, it was just the rest of your water. Like you're not peeing your pants. And I was able to keep walking around a little bit. And then like they say with Pitocin, it's like you get to the point where you don't get a break in between the contractions. Like it was like I was having one and another one was starting before it was even ending. And I remember like I looked at my mom and I looked at CJ and I'm like, I don't know what to do. I don't know if I want to sit. I don't know if I want to stand like and then I was like, I'm just going to cry. And I just stood up and cried and, you know, CJ hugged me and I was like, I think I want to ask for IV pain medication. So before this, I had my whole birth plan printed out for my mom, because as I said before, she's a nurse practitioner. So I'm like, okay, she can kind of act a little bit like my doula, like obviously, like she's not like um, in labor and delivery, but she can kind of handle the medical side of things for me of like talking with the doctor, talking with the nurses, um, the medical professionals, if I need her to. And I had everything very clear cut, like, if I'm at you know, seven centimeters asking for an epidural, don't give it to me. Like, just tell me I'm almost there, you know, whatever. But if I'm under five centimeters, give it to me because like I'm not going to make it. Like, I just <laughs> had like very clear cut things of like, offer me this first and remind me of this, like remind me of what I wanted, um, like oh, why I, like I that. wanted to go natural. And I like had some of the affirmations that have been talked about in the podcast before too, like written out, like I'm like, tell me this word I had. Um, essential oils there. Like I had gone over with CJ where everything was packed in the suitcase. So, but also, like I said, I was educated all around on things that I wanted. So, or not that I wanted, but things that I knew were available if I did want them. So at this point I was like, okay, my pain, I don't want to do it like this. Like I want to try the IV pain meds before I try an epidural. So they came in and they were like, you know, they're it's going to make you feel like you're a little drunk. It won't hurt the baby. You know, they gave me all the information and I was like, I haven't been drunk in eight months. <laughs> That's fine. Like, <laughs> so Sounds good. Like, I, yeah, I'm like, anything is fine. I'm, it's New Year's Eve. I don't care. You know? <laughs> and um, so they gave it to me and I just got so much more exhausted. And I remember like it kind of curbed the pain a little bit, but I was like, now I'm just exhausted and in pain. And I remember just sitting there like, okay, at least, you know, I'm going to breathe through it a little bit, um, work through some of the positions on the ball. I was still kind of bouncing around on the ball. Um, and then it was like around midnight because the ball was about to drop and the nurse came around with like mocktails for us, which was so, so sweet. That's and cute. I remember CJ started pouring mine and I was like, I do not give a crap about that right now. <laughs> I, was <just> like, <laughs> I was just so over it. And I felt bad. I asked my mom after I'm like, was I mean to the nurse? And she's like, no, you were very nice about it. <laughs> and, um, and I yelled at CJ, I'm like, even though I'm in labor, you still have to kiss me when the ball drops. Like, cause, you know, at this point I was all floozy in my brain with yeah. the medication. So I'm like, you know, these are my clear demands of what I want <laughs> still. And, um, so we progressed, they weren't really doing cervical checks on me just because of the risk of infection. So I really did not know where I was at at this point. Like I was like, with the, and with the Pitocin, I'm like, I don't know if these contractions are like actually progressing towards something. Like I just was at a point where I was like, I don't know, like how much longer am I going to have to do this? And I was able to take like a little nap and I woke up and I was in like awful pain again. And it got to a point where I was just like, you know what? It's fine. I called for the epidural. And my mom went through my list with me of like, you know, 
here's what you told me to say. Like, are you sure you still want it? And I was like, at this point, I want to enjoy the rest of my labor. Um, and I want to go to bed. Like, I'm like, I need rest before I push. Like I, I need, I knew that I needed that. So I, I hit the little button on the remote and I remember like, it takes you to like the secretary or something. So you can tell them who you need. And I was just like, I need an epidural, (laughs) no person, just an epidural. (laughs) And they were like, okay. And they were so quick about it. It They got there in like probably 20 minutes. And I think having the IV pain meds first um, kind of eased my mind a little bit about it because I was really just nervous about a needle in my back. And they really sat with me. They talked me through the whole thing. The midwife was still the one I had met before who was there like over the night. So she sat with me and did it. And I remember being like, oh, okay, this is great. I feel good. And then I was like, oh gosh, like, I feel like I'm going to throw up. And literally at the end of my sentence, I threw up everywhere. And I was like, I'm so sorry. That's so embarrassing. And they're like, no, you missed our shoes. Like, it's fine. (laughs) And my mom said that they were sitting outside the room and like someone came out and asked for a bunch of towels. And my mom's like, like, what do they need towels for with an epidural? Like she was a little concerned of like what happened. And then as soon as they walked in, I'm like, guys, I threw up everywhere. Like it was so embarrassing. And they told me that was one of the risks of if I did eat the dinner that I could throw up and I was still fine that I did it. (laughs) But, um, so then I, I, or she did one cervical check after I got the epidural and I was six and a half centimeters. So I was like, okay, you know, that was kind of my like maybe point anyways. Like I knew I was progressing, but I still knew I needed rest. And, um, she told me like, you did a great job. Like you utilized that perfectly. Like you were still able to feel what contractions felt like. And then now the epidural is there to give you some ease. So I ended up just going to sleep and I slept until six 30 in the morning on new year's day now. And she came in and said, I want to do one more cervical check just before I leave um, and pass you on to the next person that comes in at seven for shift change. And I was like, okay, sounds good. Fine. I still was kind of like half asleep. Cause I'm like, I'm just going to stay asleep. And she was like, oh my gosh, you're 10 centimeters. Like it's time to start pushing. And I was like, what? Like I'm supposed to start pushing right now. Like I wanted to go back to sleep and finish my nap. <laughs> and, and she's like, no, honey, like you have to push. And I was like, but don't you guys have to do shift change or something? Like, can I wait until after that? Like, I don't feel like anyone really tells you, like, it's just such a shock to hear, you know, okay, time to push. Like, it just feels so much more real in that moment than just being in labor, I feel like. I don't know how to explain it. So, you know, CJ, you know, shot up off the couch and my mom. And so I was like, oh, I don't really want them to watch. And she's like, oh, they each have to hold a leg. Like, you know, it's just, it was just my midwife and my nurse in there. And that was it. It was very intimate. And that is exactly what I wanted. Like, I was really happy with how that played out. And so we started pushing, we did a little bit of the tug of war with the pushing where they like hold, the nurse holds a sheet and you hold the other end and they like, you know, pull you to push. I don't really know. And I remember telling her like, I'm really competitive. Like you're going to have to pull me a lot harder and <laughs> <laughs> like just still kind of making jokes about it. And, you know, in between I had asked to have the TV on, we were watching animal planet in between pushes. Um, and then it came time for the actual shift change where the new midwife came in and it was someone I had never, ever seen before. <laughs> and I was like, oh, are you kidding me? And she was coming from a different hospital. She was floating for the holiday. And I was like, oh, yep, of course this would happen after I took all the time to meet all the midwives in <laughs> the practice. Right. And this is what happened. So, you know, you, you kind of just got to go with what you're dealt. And I remember she came in and right away, she was just like, push, push, push harder, 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 like really almost like a drill sergeant. And I like looked at my mom and I was like, I don't know how this is going to go because I, that was really like offsetting to me. Whereas like the other one was very, I don't want to say calm, but more soothing about it, I guess. Um, but she ended up being exactly what I needed. I pushed for three and a half hours and like at that like halfway point, I needed that like enthusiasm of like, keep going, keep going. You got this. Like, um, you're doing amazing. Like everything is going like, we can see 
I think after the first hour, they kept telling me like, we can see her, we can see her. And I'm like, after two hours of hearing that, I'm like, if you guys say that to me again, like (laughs) I am over it because I can't see her. (laughs) Like I I don't have her in my arms. Like this is not fun anymore. And I got to a point where I was sleeping in between pushes and, um, it finally, I don't remember what it was, you know, I started pushing and she got up to put her gear on and CJ, you know, piped in and said, look, like she's putting the gear on. He had heard that in one of your episodes of like, you know, that's when, you know, it's really coming. So he's like, she's putting the baby catching stuff on. Like, this is really it this time. Like, you know, you're doing so good. Cause other than that, he stayed pretty quiet. I was like telling him, I was still really able to feel my contractions like when I needed to push and she was very respectful about allowing me the space of saying like, okay, I want to push now. Um, you know, telling them when to grab my legs, you know, she really let me be in control of my labor, which I was very appreciative of even with the epidural. And so, you know, he was like, okay, this is it now, honey. Like this is, it's go time. She's coming out. And so, that was the most relieving feeling I had ever felt was like having the baby out. Like I felt like I took my first deep breath of like in eight months, like I'm like, I can breathe. Um, And I had talked with them beforehand about, um, you know, when you go in and they do all the questions of, you know, do you want skin to skin right away? How, like who's cutting the umbilical cord, Um, all the things like that. And CJ had heard on one of your episodes of when people do home births, sometimes they like will chew on the umbilical cord to like release the, um, what oxytocin, is that Mm -hmm. what it is? Yeah. And so he had tried to make a joke to the nurse about like, I want to bite the umbilical cord. (laughs) I don't want to cut it. I want to bite it. And she just like stopped dead in her tracks and like looked at him and he wasn't giving like a, he wasn't cracking a smile or nothing. And I was like, he's kidding. He won't bite the umbilical cord in the hospital. (laughs) And like, it was just so funny because she was like, is this guy serious right now? And so I had to explain to her, I'm like, we listened to a podcast. Like he heard it on the podcast. He's not crazy. Like, (laughs) and so, you know, finally it came to the time where all those and I had said, I want the, um, the, what is the hour called? The golden hour. The golden hour. Yes. So yeah. I was like, you know, I want her, you know, to stay on me, skin to skin, the golden hour, all that. Well, as soon as she came out, I, they didn't give her to me. And I was like, they yelled short cord. So she couldn't reach my chest. And then she didn't cry right away. And they took her like to the other side of the room. And I was like, no, no, this isn't this isn't what I wanted. Like, what's wrong? What's wrong with her? Because I knew she wasn't crying either. And they kept saying like, oh, nothing. Like, and then my midwife is trying to coach me through kind of the placenta coming out. And I'm like, what's like, give me my baby. What's wrong with my baby? And I, you know, I'm in tears, obviously. Finally, she cried. And I remember, you know, feeling relief at that point, like that she was making noise. I could hear her. I could see them across the room with her. And CJ was going back and forth between both of us. And finally, after like asking, asking, they're like, she has a high heart rate. She has a fever. um, And one of her arms like wasn't moving. And I was like, just just give her to me. Like, give me my baby. Like, that's all I want. And so finally, I mean, it felt like so long. My mom said it was less than 10 minutes, but I just, you know, in that moment, I'm like, that's all I want. Like, I just, I did all this work. I held her for so long in my body and now I don't have her in my arms like this. And I, I remember saying, this is the farthest she's ever been away from me. And I, you know, like just, I just kept demanding, give me my baby. And so finally they brought her over and we had the golden hour and her temperature went down to normal. Her heart rate went back to normal. I'm like, this is what she needed. Like, you know, whatever. And then they did evaluation. She was moving just fine. Um, like her arms and stuff. And so it was just like, okay, everything felt good. They had, you know, stitched me up. I did have a second degree tear, Um, which at that point I'm like, who cares? (laughs) Like my baby's here. I'm finally holding her. Like, I'm so happy. They stitched me up. I had no care in the world other than just like being with my baby, which I feel like a lot of people, you know, resonate with. So, you know, CJ was finally able to hold her. Everything, everything was great. And that was, you know, that's what it was. (laughs) That's awesome. Um, 
for the sake of time, yeah. I have a couple of questions, but then I also want to ask like your advice for moms and advice for dads because I love that part so much. Yeah. Um, yeah. But will you? Do you remember what your contractions felt like? Like when you were like, for sure, now I know I'm in labor because you had mentioned them. You talked about them feeling like crampy. So was that like crampy mm-hmm. down low, kind of like period cramps? Was it in your back? And then what did they progress to where you were like, this is a contraction. I need to focus through it. Like, what did that feel like? So I remember it was still crampy, but it almost was like when you watch it on the monitor and you can see like the up and Mm -hmm. the down, I remember feeling that like I, I felt like, okay, here's a contraction. It's getting like harder, harder, harder. And it's releasing like, I remember being able to kind of feel that with the monitor, which then I'm like, I don't even want to keep looking at it because maybe I'm just watching it happen. Um, But I remember kind of feeling like that little twinge of like, okay, I'm getting a cramp. It's getting worse. It's getting worse. Kind of like that, like when you do have to poop thing, (laughs) like it's like, okay, like this is it now and it's gone. Like it's Mm -hmm. like, that's how I remember the contractions feeling. And then once I had the epidural and I was still able to feel, that's when it felt mostly just like pressure. Um, yeah. Like I could just feel, you know, okay, I'm feeling a lot of pressure right now. And I was still very in tune with my body of like, I know my body is wanting to push now, um, which still, I don't know if I have words to describe that kind of feeling, but more like the pressure that people talk about of like, yeah. you know, it's very down low and it's very you know, forceful. (laughs) Right. (laughs) And then what were, what were the most helpful things that like your mom, your birth partner, the, the nurse, the midwife, what were the most helpful things for you, um, to work through contractions and just for like emotional support throughout? Yeah. So I had mentioned that I brought like the essential oils. Um, so I remember during pushing, I had asked, I had like a peppermint one, which you guys had talked about, I think like how, that one is for like feeling like getting energy or feeling refreshed. Um, so I was like, give just give me something. I want to try it. And I remember smelling it and in my head, I'm like, Oh, this smells like I'm eating a thin mint cookie. Like (laughs) it was so like, it really like revived me kind of like I felt energetic again. So that was helpful to have that. Um, and I think between, CJ and my mom, just them really following my wishes, like my mom going through the plan and reminding me kind of, because then I was like, not sad that I got an epidural, but I was like, ah, you know, I really had high hopes that I could do this. And she's like, you're still doing it. Like you are, you know, doing the whole thing and you did what you needed to do. Like you've been in labor for 10 hours at this point, you know, which, you know, doesn't mean much for other people, but for me, that was a lot. And she was like, it doesn't make your birth any less just because you're adding because you're because you knew your options and you're adding in what you need at this time. Like you're listening to your body. And I remember her saying that to me and it really made me feel good about like, OK, you're right. Like my body needs something different than someone else's body in this moment. Like we just people handle things differently. Um, and then I think CJ just paying such attention to detail and knowing to say like, she's putting her gear on like this is the time yeah. like, after hearing for hours that she was coming and she wasn't so I think those things really helped push me through yeah it sounds like your mom did a really great job and I think it's such an important thing for other moms to hear that are listening to um, the importance of you understanding your options and utilizing them with the knowledge behind that as like this I understand what my options are and I'm choosing to utilize this for myself in this moment for whatever the reason and then feeling good about that instead of confused Mm -hmm. or concerned or did I make the right decision so I think that's pretty powerful everything you just said okay let's end with that your best advice for moms and best advice for dads Yeah. Um, I think that would be my advice for moms is just being educated on all of it. Even if you don't think that you are going to want it or need it. Um, I think, you know, being educated on that, practicing being in tune with your body, just even like with the mindfulness or like things like that, where you're just like, listen to what you need in the moment. And, you know, as I said before, everyone's body is different, different. So you may need something different in that moment than another mom may need at a different moment. So knowing what your options are and how to utilize them, um, was a big game changer for me. 
Um, CJ said his advice for dads, I asked him earlier, would be um, even just throughout pregnancy, throughout labor, the whole thing is it's not about you at this time, you know, like just sit back and listen to what they need, like sit back and jump in when you're needed, you know, jump in to advocate when you need to jump in to be supportive when you need to, but sit back to really realize what is needed at that time. So I thought that was good advice. (laughs) Yeah, I like that too. I like the idea of like, whatever your part is, do that part well, you know, understand what your part is and then do it well, whether you're the mom, whether you're the dad, Um, you both have a very important part to play. So anyway, that's really great. Well, thank you, Savannah. This has been excellent. And I really appreciate you taking the time to share your birth story here on the podcast. And um, yeah, thank you for being here. Yeah. Thanks for having me.